I see. Where shall they go away? How are we going? I wonder. Ah, yeah, yeah. Sure Most thing. Time? Keep an eye out. The time of boredom <laughs> here. Oh, I choose boats any day. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I can pay the, the goods! Take them! You can take the goods! Stay calm! It's us! <laughs> Great job, Artyom! Way anchor! We're gonna go about halfway there, then wait in the reeds until about 4 o'clock. We want to get there early in the morning when the fog is the thickest and they are sleepy after the morning prayer.
Artemich, Duke, you're on final approach. There. See that fire at the very top? That's the control post. What well, used to be anyway. Now it's a shrine, Blit. Closer to God at the top, you see. That's where you have to go. I'll distract the guards now. Hey, you are sure? Catch the line! Ready! Hey, sailor! What did you do to your barge? What you gonna sell now? <laughs> oh, you're so funny! Jackass, bullet. So, you Artum, shall we move? Man? Whoever gets there first we wins. Break a leg. The Aurora is quietly moving into position. We'll be ready to act on your signal. Roger that, sir. We're on it. Over. Because they have arrived. Just like Mother Salandi has foretold. Who arrived? Say to the slaves! It's like you missed the morning sermon. Well, I didn't. One day you are going to get sent to fight humans for that. But it's so early. Just tell me what he said. Uh, all right. Uh, a heretic actually arrived right at the ceremony. Our guys rushed over to save the Holy Father. And the heretic killed most of them. They say he wouldn't touch you if you surrendered, though. He also didn't harm the unarmed folk that just didn't do that. He hasn't lost the life of his humanity. There's a rumor that people saw her with the heretics. So you think they might attack? Who knows? They are heretics. May the fish devour them. Yeah, they only have murder and unfortunate. to eradicate all the demons. You don't just come back after that. Well, ask anyone. They got captured by heathens, but a heretic, one of the new ones, freed them. Ah, old Simon just got cold feet, that's all. All the stories people tell not to go. No, he did not. He came back and with a huge fuss of it. Who's that? We should check the storage. Seems like there's someone inside. The hell? He's here, brothers! The field is killing people! They are killing our people! Don't shoot! 
I give up! Just don't shoot! For it is said in the scripture that we must forgive our enemies! Cold now! You see, I gave up! I gave up, see? Herself. Do you get me? Sure thing. First you kill off the local cutthroats, and then you switch to us. Will you kill elders and children too? Or have you drunk enough blood already? Leave us for good now. God may punish you for your sins, but my responsibility is to tend my flock. That's a good one. Hear me, brothers! Hold your fire! You hear me? I'll excommunicate everyone who shoots! Well, I did all I could. Just don't shoot. And tell the driver to keep it slow. The bridge is in shambles, so don't stop. Or the bridge might collapse. You will have Roger, to jump here. We've reached an agreement. They will let us through if we don't shoot and move slowly. And don't stop. I repeat, do not stop. Over. Let's jump! Well, that's a job well done, huh? <laughs> Dr. 
We left Volga behind. The endless expanses of Russia stretch before us now. The bridge dwellers had finally decided to believe that we were not demons and let us pass. Anna was right. We invaded their world, and it's not up to us to destroy it, no matter how stupid it may seem. Electricity is a sin. Is that really worse than the lies we were told in the metro about how the whole world was dead and there was nowhere to go? Everybody in the tunnels bought that convenient lie. Once we reach Yamantau, we will at least know if that lie was justified. Since so far, we haven't met any signs of enemy occupation. Artyom. Artyom. Wake up, dear. Is he up yet? Artyom, the colonel wants you on the bridge. See you later. Come on, wake up. about any occupying force. There's so much regular chatter. So many stories. Dad says all those are coded transmissions, that they all have hidden meaning, but... Why would they be so secretive? Why aren't they using this railroad? Why don't they at least control its key junctions? Why did they not install any roadblocks? If they are even out here, this is the main transport artery, after all. Maybe they are not here at all. Maybe they never came here, or they are already gone. Though, where to? Remember? Neither Katya nor Crest have ever met them. Though, we seem to be doing just fine even without them. It's like Middle Ages. That Salantius is treating people like slaves, getting them killed. I can't believe they had it worse without his lies, nonsense, and human sacrifices. And us? We had been living down there for so many years, fighting each other. And nobody even thought you could live outside. Stay here for a bit, Artyom. This is great. I wish I could stay like this forever. Artyom, when you climbed those ruins back in Moscow, or with your radio, did you imagine a life on the surface at all? A home, for one. A place where we could live. A log cabin on the outskirts of a forest. Or how about a bungalow on an ocean shore? Well, you know. There's something great in simply going anywhere like this, together. Through the abandoned stations, the ruins, the wasteland. Especially in our own private compartment. Thinking back, isn't this our honeymoon trip? <laughs> it certainly feels like one, even though it's a bit late. We've only had some honeymoon sorties at best so far. You know, I had a talk with Katya. 
I'm sitting here recalling that bridge and those people there, and we've been sitting underground for 20 years. And they haven't. So what? These are not the same people who used to build cities, planes, and space rockets. They're just like us in Metro, only even more dejected. They are, essentially, slaves. For real. They work all day and pray all night. Always watched, always directed. Everything is under control. Everything is decided by the community. Well, I mean, Celantius. They don't even have any property. Even their socks belong to the community. They're just entranced with him, with his ridiculous lies about electricity. Of course, not everyone got fooled easily, but if they dare ask questions, they get penance, exercising an electric demon with prayer and the cross. But that's a death sentence. How is a flashlight dangerous? Or a radio? But no, they shun it all. They hide and keep praying. How can you even make people believe this ridiculous garbage within just a few years? People in general start believing lies surprisingly easily, don't they? As long as those lies are convenient or at least familiar. Take us, in Metro. Alright, we haven't met the occupying forces yet. If we disregard that shirt I found on an antenna... <coughs> Katya and Crest never met them either. But maybe they are still out there somewhere. And if they are, then they didn't even tell us about them back home. They didn't tell us that the war was still on. They just made us believe that there's no life anywhere outside of Metro. They've been lying to us. Lying non-stop. All this time. Were their intentions good? Perhaps. But the Metro is a castle built on lies. <sighs> Damn, am I angry. And so far, no matter how far we get, we haven't met a single enemy. Isn't that strange? But Father won't have a word of it. Stay vigilant, be careful, the enemy never sleeps. You know, I love my father. A whole lot, no matter what. But what if everything he's been told is just another layer of lies? I hope we'll find out how deep this rabbit hole is, once we get to Yamantau. <sighs> well, what do you know? I do feel better now, after telling you. Thanks for hearing me out, Artyom. Let's just sit here a little. Alright, run along. Dad wanted something. outside and gave to me, went into making this workshop happen. So thank you. We'll have to keep pitching in like this too. Looks like we're facing a long journey, and useful things like ammo or equipment don't grow on trees. Plus, the further from Moscow we get, the harder they'll probably be to get. So don't forget to collect all the materials you find to keep us going. There's so many things to do. I haven't decided where I'm going to work on the suits, but I'll have to, and soon. Yet it's high time we fixed our uniforms. Some of our people are starting to look pretty ragged, you know? Old Duke's plate carrier won't hold the back plate anymore, and he jokes that he's lucky it's not the front one, or else his toes would be in danger. <sighs> Regardless, I am turning this little gang back into a real army. Well, that's it. 
I bragged enough and won't waste any more of your time. The Colonel summoned you. Well, I have stuff to do too. You guys are fast to break gear, but none too expedient to fix it. Here. So, Artyom, are you up for a jam? Come on, pick the guitar up. Thank you, Stepan. I'm sorry to ask, Katya, but Nastya's father, he's dead, isn't he? Does Nastya know? He is. I tried keeping it a secret. Told her he left for the market. Around three days passed, and I still kept it in. I just sat there with a needle in my hand and didn't see anything. It was all black before my eyes. And then she snuggles up to me and says, You should cry, Ma. You will feel better. Sini used to say it. So I cried and cried. She knows. She knows it all. I'm sorry, Katya. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you how we ended up at the bridge. We used to live in northeast from here. Quite close if you go in a straight line. But it took us a month. Everything's bomb to rubble out there. Yermak asked me and I told him. Sini used to say there were lots of military factories out there. Not just military, of course. General industry. And now you can't pass through there even with filters. The radiation is so high. No railway either, just crater upon crater. We were quite far, but our counter still went crazy. One route appeared intact. There was nothing to bomb. So we used that one, thinking we'd get further to the west, but... But of course they did not let us cross the bridge with the diesel. They said it was satanic. They were ready to let us stay if we gave them the diesel to cleanse it. So we stayed. And then we couldn't leave, even if we wanted. That old goat, Father Silentius, brainwashed everyone, so they would just pray and bow nonstop. They broke our diesel down with their bare hands and threw it into the river. Purification. And on top of it, they gave us trouble for not helping them. Senia went to check what was going on, and there were only locals there. Because Silentius at the Skatina had sent our people away to test them. He said that if they wanted to be truly accepted, they had to defeat a demon. Senia went to stop them. But it was too late. He only found burnt rags. And then they sent him to do the same. He never came back. Katya, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, you really didn't. What's done is done. <clears throat> <sighs> it kind of got so glum in here. Mm. Perhaps you, Stepan, could play us something. Sure thing! Well, what did you expect? <laughs> uh, so, Artyom, the colonel's well, waiting for you on the bridge. Tokarev was mad. Ah, uh, it's a long story. Come on, out with it. Well, there I am, sitting on a beam, <sighs> looking at Artyom milling about below. Oh, you are so full of it. <laughs> Artyom did most of the work. <laughs> <laughs> that he did. Uh, yeah, he did. But you don't have to interrupt my lies. You asked me about the vest yourselves. All right, go on. So I see Artyom get to the door, and I think it's time I came down. So I do. But something just holds on to me. What does? 
Oh, how should I know? It's dark. Nobody around. But I can't move. And those locals kept going on about Tsar something. So I thought I was in a kind of a bind. So? So I just unfastened the safety and let down. There was that shed down there. The roof was kind of close. Uh, 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 and what about the Tsar? Oh, blue! The Tsar was huge! Scary as shit! And there was this rusty bolt, and my carrier got snagged on it. <laughs> well, here's you one of my do. favorites. Are lucky you already have a nickname. Uncle Dokarev! Uncle Dokarev! A oh, smoke break! That's good. What would you like to ask, Nastya? <sighs> oh, this is one mean smoke. Damn, this is rough. Well, <clears throat> nothing we couldn't take. <clears throat> well, you are the right kind of guys. You, the colonel, duke, that guy did a swell job on that bridge. And now he's bragging about it like a child. He's a child, really, no, a child. But he's good. So, uh, yeah, what did I want to say? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. You you people accepted me, and, and I... Uh, I'm a simple guy. I, I, I will pay the debt back, okay? So, how do you like it out here after your tunnels? Freedom, huh? Sure thing. So much space. It feels too empty to me, though. Just reeds and ruins and those damn mutants. Hate them. Though you guys are gonna see the government. So, Bratuha, don't be mad, but just tell me, what the hell do you even need them for? Well, of course, it might be interesting to take a look, but throughout all of my rambling, I only met two kinds of ex-government people. Dead ones and gang leaders. And let me tell you, the latter are much worse than your typical bandit. They just have to make a speech before doing something off. So what I mean, I, I didn't really care about the government even before the war, much less now, when everything's long since gone to shit. So what for, really? I'm a simple man, Artyomich. I told I'm with you, that means I'm with you for the long haul. But I'd much rather find a nice place to live at than go see the government. Of course, they could give us luxury bunkers or something. Well, Artyom, you seem cold. Go get warmed up a bit. I'll smoke some more. I have stuff to think about. No, I don't. Or just stay. <laughs> we have enough space now. Uh, it was well, he enough. basically solved the whole problem. Do that. Good job, Artyom. Come here, Artyom. Listen. I had a talk with the Ark. All thanks to Tokarev, he got the decoder working. Ark, come in. Come in, Ark. Over. Hey, this is Ark. Hey, uh, identify yourself. Uh, over! This is Colonel Svetoslav Mionnikov speaking. I'm in command of a special operations force. We have received your signal and are currently heading your way. Do you copy? Over. Yes, yes! I hear you loud and clear. Who am I talking to? How do I address you? A deputy Chief of Communications Department, Major Ivanov. A, a moment! Oh, yes, Major. I understand that the checkup is in order. Great, Colonel. Um, Emelnikov? Simply capital. I am sorry for the lack of trust, but, as you know, the situation is dire and the enemy is always ready to strike. I do understand, Major, and I hope that you can tell the leadership that my people are true to their duty and will be at their full disposal as soon as we arrive. Over. Thank you for the great news. How large is your force, 
Colonel. I have a squad of the best operatives the Special Forces have to offer. A squad? Ah, I see. Well, this is great. Great! Yes, we are a large force, but we bring a message of extreme importance. We are heading towards you from Sector K-6 Alpha. Do you have any data on enemy forces we might encounter on the way? Over. In just a moment, I have to check. K-6... Uh, Alpha, you say? Uh, as far as I can see, there have been no enemy encounters ever reported in the area, Colonel. I regret. I must end our conversation here, but know that we are waiting for your arrival. I am making my report immediately, and I am sure the Minister of Defense will be eager to see you. This is a great honor! Thank you! Just a few words more, though. Uh, what is the general situation there, Major? Please. Uh, Colonel, sir, you do understand this is classified information, uh, but... I do understand you. We are doing fine. Do not worry. Well, see you in the Ark. Over and out. I serve the people. Over and out. So, do you get this now, you doubting Thomas? I'm so excited my hands are still shaking. The minister himself! This is incredible. By the way, Artyom, you should take a look at the map. As you can see, we're heading almost... We are approaching the Yamantau Bunker, the final destination of our long journey. Direct radio contact with the bunker has completely dissolved Miller's resentment towards me for destroying our previous lives. He is eagerly anticipating the meeting with the Minister of Defense he was promised. Probably such things are important for a career officer. The people, though, are less interested. They are asking important questions. Where are the occupying forces? Why is there just wilderness and people gone wild around? What's stopping the government from restoring the country? What was being done in the last 20 years? Miller believes that we'll get all the answers. He will be pardoned, as well as Anna and I. And we will all return home to the metro. Stop the engine. 